So I'm going to give a quick rundown of how to connect um, a YRC1000 uh, robot controller to an Automation Direct PLC uh, using Ethernet IP. Um, from a hardware standpoint, you can see I have my productivity PLC here um, connected to a switch. And then also connected to that switch, I have uh, the YRC1000 controller. And then the other is just going to my laptop for uh, so I can ping it and whatnot. Um, we're gonna start off by going to our pendant. And what you need to do is start up in maintenance mode. You can see that indicated by this little, or the, this text here. Um, basically, if you hold the main menu button while you're turning on the disconnect of your robot, you hold that until it starts, it says it's booting up in maintenance mode, uh, then you can let go of it. Um, I've already done that just so we don't have to wait through all that. Um, the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you're in um, maintenance mo management mode. Uh, I've already entered that as well, but if you go here, you'll normally start out in editing mode. To go into management mode, you just do management mode, and then if it's like a fresh controller from the factory like this one is, you just do a bunch of nines until you can't anymore, and hit enter. Now you're in management mode. Then um, what we're going to do is you go to setup, um, we're gonna go all the way down to option function. And then um, I like to, ch well, if we go into LAN interface settings, um, we can see that uh, IP address settings LAN 2, and note that I'm connected to LAN 2 on the controller here. It's hard to see, but LAN 2. Um, so I typically like to have a different IP address for my robots. So I'm just gonna change this to 20. Okay, and then I'm gonna hit enter. And that'll basically make sure my, uh, actually I'll just verify. So my subnet is this, so just keep that in mind. Make sure that the, your PLCs will match in the future. Um, but anyways, gonna hit enter to modify, yes. This won't actually modify until you power cycle the controller. So like if I were to try to ping that IP address right now, it wouldn't work. Uh, but next we're gonna go to ethernet IP CPU board. Um, we go to ethernet, just continue hitting select. Um, this is where you can, I don't know if you defined it here or not, but basically uh, we're gonna just go down to adapter since my PLC is going to be the uh, scanner or master node in this network and my robot controller is going to be the adapter or slave so we're going to go ahead go to adapter uh, we see here that it's enabled so that is good uh, this is all just basically the default configuration so the input size so the number of bytes coming in is eight the number of bytes going out is eight we don't have any configuration i'm not honestly sure what that really means um, and then the instance uh, numbers which on the, P, uh, the PLC, they're called like assembly instances. Uh, I think that's just like where it starts off in memory or something. Um, anyways, this is all factory stuff. So I basically recorded this uh, down on my notepad here. So you can see, I basically have just copied exactly what we have there. Um, and note that when we do this in the PLC, so this is the PLC configuration up above, it's basically the exact opposite. So input, well, those lengths are gonna be the same, but Input assembly point for the robot controller down here is 50, but up on here it's 100. But the output here is 50, which corresponds to this input, which is 50. So you basically just have to swap them around and make sure you have that correctly. So anyways, uh, so back to here, uh, that all looks good. So now we hit enable, or excuse me, enter, and then we just keep hitting enter. It's gonna ask us if we wanna modify, we say yes. Now it's gonna just basically show a bunch of screens. Uh, you hit enter until it keeps asking you if you wanna modify. Yes. Um, and now we just go to external IO allocation. And again, we're just hitting enter until it's modify. Yes. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, um, that should be everything we need from the robot controller side. So we're gonna go ahead and reboot the CPU by just hitting the CPU reset and we're gonna hit reset okay so see so that's booting back up 
will come to the computer. Um, I'm just gonna open up a command prompt. So to see if we can ping. So we're gonna ping that IP address that we expect for the robot, which is 192.168.1.20. And I'm just gonna do dash T, so it just keeps going. Um, so we're still starting up, so that of course won't go for a little bit. So um, in the meantime, sorry that this is slow, I'm doing it all with one hand as well. So we're gonna go to our, let's see, this did a little bit of something. Quest timeout. Oh, this is like sometimes a trick, um, put your, put your like uh, computer in airplane mode and it will then start working. It was trying to send all those requests out the Wi-Fi, um, which obviously there, it wasn't there. So putting it in airplane mode made it like force it to go through the LAN connection. So then we can just turn airplane mode off, but it still remembers that we're talking to it through there. Okay, so that's good. So the PLC, or the, excuse me, the robot controller has the correct IP address. And now we just come into here um, this is like a fresh project. I ha it doesn't even have a name or anything. So, uh, but what I'm going to do is going to do hardware config. Um, come in here, go to Ethernet IP tab, and then we're just going to do a generic client. And I'm going to call this RBC01 for Robot Controller One. IP address is at 192.168.1.20. So that's the IP address of the robot. Um, I didn't do anything here. And then I do this and I type in like RBC. I don't, I'm really new to this software, so I don't really know what's going on. If you do that, it adds a bunch of, um, like a struct with a bunch of different uh, variables by itself. So then we're gonna go to, oh, sorry if you missed that. So RBC struct, bunch of variables. So anyways, now we're going to the plus IO message. Okay, now this is where we're gonna use that, that up. Um, we have to make sure we match up exactly. So we're gonna delivery option, we're gonna change it to unicast since we're only talking like directly between these two devices. Um, this is the like refresh time, like how often it's gonna like send or request um, messages. And now assembly instance connection point. So we're on input right now. So this is input for the PLC, which is output for the robot. So if we go back to here, we see we're on PLC, input assembly point is 100, which is corresponds to the, sorry, I keep turning my phone, um, input 100, which corresponds to output assembly point here of 100. So I'm gonna put type in 100. And now we just need, this is where we kind of set up that data. So we, we saw that, um, we said that there's eight bytes coming in and eight bytes going out. So now we just have to like kind of make like a data instruct. So data in, once you click off that, it's gonna request or like have you do this, switch it to eight bit unsigned. And this columns thing is like how many bytes there are. So like that, so we can see eight elements. We're gonna make this up to here. So now our message size from array in bytes is eight, which matched the robot controller. Okay, so that's good for this. We'll go to, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uncheck that for now. Uh, well, basically the, the, I did this just by trial and error, but I found out that the Scala, you need this to be checked for it to work. Um, so let's see, assembly instance connection points. So that is back to our little sheet. So we have, um, so output, output, this is gonna be 50. Okay, and then just like before, we had a data in, so we're gonna call it data out. Click off of it, and again, switch it to eight bits, and we want eight of those put this all the way up. And now, last thing is um, we want an, we want configuration data enabled. Uh, so this assembly instance, is that gonna be that 150 from here? So 150, 150. 
and then array tag blah 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 so basically i found that you just gotta have to you like need to create one even though our like actual configuration length is zero bytes um you just gotta make one so we click here it's like okay sure do whatever size you want and then see how it has one element so we have the ability to go up to here and increase it to four bytes but we just keep it on zero to keep it like that okay so that should be everything we need here uh here it's going to tell us that basically none of these signals are defined and it's like going to help us out just by defining them all these ones that were created um so now i heard that you should just like do this uh increase these string lengths so that your messages don't get truncated at all um, so I'm just going to increase them to 64 uh, and then that should be good to go so now we'll go ahead and go online with our PLC um, I'm going to use this project and then I'm going to download it to the to the PLC Okay, that should be downloaded. So now we can verify that if we actually are communicating between our devices. Um, if we go into that ethernet IP, or excuse me, hardware config again, click on this, and then hit monitor, um, we can basically tell it, it'll make like a monitor for us. Again, I'm like super new at this software. So we just click okay. Now when we go into data viewer on the side, over here, um, that one is created up at this top top thing here. Okay, so we can see that there's nothing going on, but that's because our enable signal is uh, set to zero. So we can edit it to this, and then we send our edits. And with that, we can see that um, the adapter name, so it went out and talked, and the robot said it was this. Here's its vendor ID, which is the Escala vendor ID, and that our message status is success which is sweet. And then you can also come in here on input and output. Um, I think it's external. Yeah, you go to external input, this 2006X, um, if all the values for that are zero, that means your communication is good. So um, anyways, that should hopefully help people out so they don't have to struggle as much as I did. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks, bye.